Campaign coordinator Lucy Powell joins us now from Salford. Uh, Lucy Powell, welcome to the program. What taxes would Labour raise to cut the deficit? Well, we've said that we will reintroduce the 50p uh, top rate of tax for the very highest earners to pay uh, down the deficit. But as you heard from that clip there, you know, this is a three-pronged uh, strategy in terms yeah. of getting it, it the is, deficit. I'm going to do all prongs, yeah. so let us okay. stick with tax rises. What tax, well, I think it's really important to have the taxes, context. What other taxes would you increase? Well, as I was just going to go on to say, if you could just let me uh, finish the first point, was the 50p top rate of tax will uh, will go up. We'll have sensible spending reductions in the unprotected departments, and we've set out many of those. And I'm coming on to your thir to the third point, Andrew, which goes directly to your point, yep. which is that the way that we will get the deficit down, the way that the Tories have failed to get the deficit down, is by ensuring that people across society, that every everybody and hard-working, ordinary families have got the tax receipts coming in to the Exchequer because they are on right. decent paid proper jobs and they're not drawing down on welfare as we have seen under the Tories. All so right. It's so about increasing the, the increasing tax receipts the tax across... Base. A, I'm asking yes. about specific tax rises. Are you telling me this morning that the only tax you will need to increase to reduce the deficit is the top rate of 50p. That's the tax, the, the only tax that we have set out that we will be increasing. And, and according and, but to... We, uh, but we are, we are very clear that what we can do is increase the tax base. That is or, what has happened, and, not happened under the Tories. Right, you know, they, so, they, said, they said they would eliminate the deficit by the end of this Parliament. They haven't. They've not even really halved it. And why has that happened? Because you've seen a, a huge increase in the number of people on zero hours contract, on low pay, the minimum and, wage and hasn't come kept... Yeah, no, no, it's really I'm important. All, we'll, yeah, okay, we'll get well, if you just let that. me finish, if you no, just, just let me finish. It would be useful if you yeah, answer the okay. questions and we'll get to all okay. that. Are you telling me that the only tax you will raise will be the top rate, a tax which the IFS says could bring in between nothing and £2 billion, between well, let, nothing let, let's and £2 see billion. What it, Let's That's see it. what it brings in, let's see what it brings in. But the critical point here is that we have seen working families across the country having to rely on housing benefit, on tax credits, instead of paying into the Exchequer because they are worse off. People are £1,600 a year worse off. Wages have stagnated and the cost of living has oh. risen. Rents have risen. So we've seen a 60% increase in the number of people who are in work claiming housing benefit. All right. The economy is not working and that is why okay. the deficit has not been eliminated. And it's an absolutely critical point All right, to the let's argument move on then the deficit. To, let, let's try and get down though to some details to, as, instead of general aspiration. No, it's so not a general aspiration. On, so you're it's only really going to increase point. taxes one tax and that's a tax that could increase uh, revenues by zero so let's look at spending cuts because that seems you're going to have to depend more uh, no, on that's them. your interpretation what, of what? the 50p tax no, rate no, it's the IFS's it's no, it's it's interpretation, interpretation okay. lucy powell uh, it's not my interpretation uh, what cuts would you make to reduce the deficit We've set out a number of cuts. I mean, we'll obviously have to see what the books are like when we get into Parliament. But we have said things like, for example, that we will reduce the winter fuel payments to the very okay. richest pensioners, those pensioners who earn That's over £42,000 a year. We will freeze... Uh, only have child benefit increasing by uh, 1% uh, a year. We will freeze ministerial pay, for example, and, and cut ministerial pay. And also, very critically, we've gone through a very robust and rigorous process of our zero-based spending reviews across every single government mm. department where we've identified a number of savings that we can make in those departments. So, for example, in the Home, in the home Office, we've identified a quarter of a billion pounds worth of savings there. In the local government uh, budget, half a billion pounds worth of savings there that we think we can uh, get by uh, All right. back office sharing. Uh, in the Education Department, there's a huge amount of savings to be made from the uh, the free school programme, for example. So we've gone through that process. And I think the yes. critical thing here is that the Tories haven't gone through that process. All right, they well, let me, stick, but let me stick, with you. You. Let me stick well, with you, because yeah. we've looked at, at, at these and we've looked at your zero-based budgeting approach as well. And with the Good. best will in the world, it's hard to find more than a billion pounds worth of cuts uh, that can be used to pay for the deficit. For example, your child benefit cap is already factored into government forecasts of uh, spending and revenues. So you don't get 400 million. We, we cannot find anything more than a billion pounds when you add up everything you've just said.
Can you tell us any more cuts this morning? That, that is, it does add up to uh, more than a billion pounds. How much? It does add up to more than a billion How pounds. Much? There is 11 zero base spending reviews we've already published. There are s several more uh, still to come. How much does Some it bigger add department, up? There are still bigger departments still to come. I haven't added them up here, but it's more than that. Uh, we have said that we will reduce the deficit year on year and that we will balance the books as okay. soon as possible in the next parliament, Can but certainly by the end. Now, the critical thing here, Andrew, I think that people will want to uh, understand Understand, rather than this sort of Paxo style uh, interview. The critical thing here is that the Conservative Party spending plans are much, much deeper and much greater right. than ours. And that they will be deeper. In, well, no, about I am. Your yes, but plans. I am. But yeah, I am. You, you no, but I am. But that's not the subject of if my interview. If you just let me finish the point, uh, like if Mr. you let Miliband, me finish the point. You don't get to ask your own questions. Okay, I'm I get to ask the, the questions okay, and you answer them. I would like to point out to you, Lucy Powell, that this morning, all you have told us in terms of deficit reduction is that you would have one tax rise which could bring in nothing and so far spending cuts that barely come to a billion. Add these two together, that is not a credible deficit reduction package. No, it isn't what I've said to you this morning, Andrew, because you aren't listening to what I'm saying. I've said to you there are three prongs to our strategy for deficit reduction. And I'll rehearse those again for you now, if you like. That we will have fair tax rises for those with the broadest shoulders, including the reintroduction of the 50p tax rate. We will have sensible spending cuts across other departments, that those that I have set out and others that are still to come. And thirdly, and most critically, this is absolutely why the Tories have failed to reduce the deficit, we will get ordinary working families paying taxes in and not having to draw down on the welfare state because we've seen a huge proliferation of people who are in work having to claim benefits they are on insecure zero hours low paid jobs that they how, how mean, many people mean, are, how many so people are all, on zero uh, hour contracts how many people are in zero hour contracts over 800,000 well it's 700,000 actually of which a third don't want to work any more hours and 17% of students so well, how would getting them off zero hour contracts result in an avalanche of new tax revenues? It's a critical issue. It's across, What's it's the, across the board. To the question? Yeah, the, I, I'm answering the question. If you just let me speak, Andrew, this is really annoying. <laughs> You've had um, plenty of time to speak. Yeah, I'm, I'm now actually going to speak. You know, in the real world, Andrew, where I live, okay, unlike where you live and many other people. You have no the idea media where I live. Just answer yeah. the question. Okay. In the real world where I live, I meet constituents the entire time, I know family and friends the entire time, who are on zero hours contracts or insecure short term contracts or many other contracts outside zero hours that are insecure, low pay and are short term, who go from job to job without any security. They are having to have their wages topped up by the state. Housing benefit, rents have gone through the roof. Are you going roof, to abolish okay? zero hour contracts? We have said that we will, yes, we, we, we will be banning exploitative zero hours contracts. Oh, if you, no, if no, you no. Are, are you, you going are... to abolish zero hour contracts outright? No, we said that ah. if you are in a regular job, if you are working in a regular job, you will have the right to have a regular contract. So in a, in a, in a small uh, few situations, zero hours contracts worse. But what we have seen well, a third is the absolute people on them explosion. Like them want them. A we third have seen an explosion in zero hours contracts <laughs> under this government, no question. And we can well, see that in the, we can the see that I'm sorry, we the last time you, in the workplace. The last time you said that the Office for National Statistics had to draw, draw you up and say the figures show no explosion uh, in zero hour, uh, on gone people on zero hours contracts. Fourfold. They've gone up fourfold in this parliament. Some with the Four, same, fourfold. some with the, the actual number of people on zero-hour contracts has not gone up fourfold at all. The number of zero-hour contracts has gone up fourfold in the this number parliament. Of people on and it's them what has we not. all see in our constituents. It's it what we does... see in workplaces. And the, the critical thing is, if you ask the IFS, you ask any, any independent economist, they will tell you that the reason why the deficit has not been eliminated, as the Tories said it would be, is because they haven't had the tax right. receipts coming in from okay. ordinary hard-working families. In fact, right. in fact, at the other end of the ledger, what has happened under this government is that you have seen the welfare bill, despite all their pernicious policies, the bedroom tax and taking benefits off the disabled and getting rid of crisis loans and all those nasty, nasty policies that they've brought in, despite all of that the welfare bill under this government is actually 25 billion pounds right. higher than they said can it I, would be can I ask that you is this why they have not reduced can the i deficit. ask you this since we're talking about deficit reduction if the, you make the changes that you want to zero hours contracts how much extra rec tax revenue will that bring in 
I, I haven't got those figures in front of me. I'm not sure that we've worked that out. This is, a, this is going to be, this is going to be a process over time. This is going to be a process over time. We will inherit a £75 billion deficit. And we have said that by the end of the, the, the Parliament, if not sooner, we mm. will have balanced the books. Doesn't and it, it will follow? be across these range of, of areas that we will do that. So it's, doesn't it follow, even if you get some extra growth in the economy, though, the current tax, current tax projections assume growth of at least 2.5%. Even if you were to get more, given what you've told us this morning, it is inconceivable that you would not have to borrow billions and billions more. And that's what you would do. You would borrow more, wouldn't you? No. Not, not, we, our manifesto commitments will require no extra borrowing. They are all fully funded, unlike the Conservative no, Party, no. who have got £10 billion of unfunded tax cuts. I'm, I'm not talking about of, money for spending. On, I'm talking to, of, to bridge the deficit. You will have to borrow more. You're going to borrow £30 billion a year uh, simply to pay for public investment. That's part of what you're going to do, we're correct? Going to, we're going to balance the books by the, the current uh, expenditure yes. by the end of the and parliament. And borrow £30 billion a year for public well, we, we, investment. We may, we may use some investment uh, borrowing for much-needed investment, but not for day-to-day -day, uh, No, I spending. understand. So that's another £30 billion a year you will borrow for investment, correct? I, I, I don't know those figures. It depends on what the, the well, books in, are like when in we inherit. OBR. Public it depends investment what, it, is 30 no, no, billion the, a I year. Think those fig, no, no, those figures are, are other people's figures. No. We will see the books when we get them, but we've been absolutely clear about what we intend to do, and that is to, right. uh, to, to, to bring the deficit down to, to okay. zero by the end of the Parliament. Lucy Powell, thank you very much for thank joining you. us.